नमस्ते वेलकम टू माई पॉडकास्ट इट इज बिन अ वाइल सिंस माई लाइट लास्ट पॉडकास्ट लेट्स जस्ट से दैट डी मोनिटाइजेशन केप्ट इज ऑल बिजी फॉर अ वाइल आई बिन रियली कीन टू हैव दिस गेस्ट ऑन माई पॉडकास्ट फॉर अ लॉन्ग टाइम बट अनफॉर्चुनेटली समथिंग ऑफ दी अदर केप्ट कमिंग अप एंड वी हैव बिन डीलेइंग दिस कॉन्वर्सेशन जस्ट टू गिव यू अ बैकग्राउंड एज टू वाई आई वॉन्टेड दिस कॉन्वर्सेशन टू हैपन सो इट कैंड ऑफ गोज लाइक दिस आई वॉज एट अ कॉफी शॉप विद सम वन वेर वी वर डिस्कसिंग सोशल इश्यूज एंड द नेम ऑफ आर एस एस क्रॉप्ट अप the gentleman with whom i was having this conversation had a very negative view about the rss but when i asked him why does he think the rss is bad he really had no answer i told him to take his time and give me five specific reasons why he feels rss is bad and an organization like rss is bad for our country he could not give me one specific reason other than the standard line that they are fascist homophobic xenophobic they hate muslims and they want to oppose uh, they want to impose hindutva on the entire nation i asked him again why has he labeled rss with all these pejoratives but he could not explain and this is what led me to decide that i think someone needs to really have a conversation with rss on mul- on a multiple range of issues to clear this mess out after all what does the rss stand for they are such a large organization they have to have a view on issues just to clear things from the beginning I'm not a member of RSS not that I think being a member of RSS is a bad thing I think all ideas need to survive in the marketplace of ideas and I will interact with people from all ideologies in fact I had recently written an article in Op India titled the left labeled me sanghi and why I am fine with it anyways enough of all this so this is when I contacted Ratan Sharda ji Sharda ji and I have known each other for a while Sharda ji is a member of the national media team of the rss currently he has been involved with the rss in a variety of roles for the last 50 years he is an author of four books one of them is called the secrets of rss it is a very good book i would recommend everyone to read that book uh, i have read that book uh, so without further ado namaste sharda ji namaste ji so sharda ji before we start uh, into the nitty gritty first things first what is the rss so what is the basic history of the organization and what what kind of social work is the rss involved in okay so let me try to put it briefly it's a long history of 90 years that rss has been around uh, the founder of rss uh, dr keshav baliram hedgewar uh, was uh, earlier a congressman in fact 1920 congress convention in nagpur he was one of the co conveners and incidentally he introduced a resolution which was not accepted by congress committee at that time that india should be the fore runner for fighting the imperialist forces capitalist forces in the world so that was a progressive vision about the world uh, before that uh, he was also um, uh, a part of uh, anushilan samiti in calcutta where he went to do his uh, medical uh, uh, i mean doctor's degree he came from a very poor family but was very patriotic from earliest of his childhood i will not go into narrating the history of his patriotic uh, idea you know stories but another story is that he threw away the trophies given by the school for celebrating the birthday of the queen of the england at that time he was hardly 8 years i think at that time he also organized a vande mataram uh, during his school days when the, uh, the british inspector came whichever class he went the students would shout together vande mataram he was very incensed he went to the principal who is this boy and they could not catch the boy everybody said we are it we are it and uh, they said we'll suspend the whole class so finally doctor ji said this enough he went to the principal said that i have done it you don't punish others and he was thrown out of the school that is a st- uh, fiery story of this guy a very athletic very strong and uh, with a very very hot headed temper Uh, so that is then he uh, he got some help he went to calcutta to do his uh, uh, you know medical degree where he as i said you know had some uh, interesting interaction with the revolutionaries but when he came back he realized that this may not be the solution so he joined congress and uh, after the 1920s as i talked about that convention there is also the story of uh, the khilafat andolan where if you remember moplas uh, rebelled after the the khilafat andolan lost team it was the first mistake made by congress of trying to uh, become friendly with orthodox orthodox mullahs rather than uh, tying up with the 
progressive Muslims and that is the pain we are still suffering by the way. Uh, so after all these incidents that happened during that time forced Dr. Hilke to think whether it is the right, whether it is any sense by having, we are fighting for uh, independence while we don't have unity in the country. He also realized over years, having studied history, that actually the problems that India faces today is because the majority community, the Hindus, are not united. They fight with each other, they have differences on caste, religion, uh, regionalism. So all these problems, unless this society becomes much more courageous, confident, united and gets over these differences, that independence that India will, will get will not be really worth it because the ru rulers will change but the thinking of the society will not change. So this made him thinking and he then started our RSS uh, on the Dashera day of 1925, that's the beginning of the RSS in a small room. Then he started activities on the ground carrying about 12-15 young boys. Uh, in a place in Nagpur where he started playing with them, taking them for exercise and people said a 34 year old guy has he gone mad playing with boys <laughs> and he says I will unite into society and he says that I will you know create all, all India organization. So that is the humble beginning from where today you will find more than 50,000 branches of RSS across India right from Arunachal to Kanyakumari and Kerala right from Kutch, Gujarat to Assam, Kamrup and Jammu Kashmir across India in, near, in, in all the districts and nearly all the tehsils as we see today. So that is the background of RSS. So this was not against anybody. This organization began as an exercise in creating a united Hindu society so it will overcome its weaknesses. He realized that until Hindu society becomes disciplined and overcomes its own weaknesses, all the solutions to the country will fall by the wayside. So it was a Pro movement was not anti movement. That is, first of all, you must realize this. Achha, is sabse main baat hai ki, unfortunately, we don't know much about the RSS. Uh, there are a lot of multiple reasons for that. I think some of the reasons are the media. I would also net. add because there is a lot of talk of you know uh, RSS people not having played any role in independence struggle. Yeah, I I, I was yeah. just about to ask you that. That is Do a key question. So tell, let me tell you, Dr. Hedgeva took part in non-cooperation movement, the first one. And he was he was uh, he was jailed. He went to the court. His argument was so strong that just said your original speech for which you were captured is much milder than what is speaking in the court. You can be thrown in for the contempt of court. So he was given a nine months imp rigorous imprisonment. Then there was a satyagraha parallel to salt satyagraha called jungle satyagraha because Vidarbha did not have salt. So in the jungle satyagraha again he was in jail for ten months. So in all, twice he went to jail and he spent 19 months in the jail. Along with him, many other RSS people also went. But fortunately or unfortunately, he said that since we are working for the independence, Congress is the party of independence working for everybody. So there has to be no identification as RSS or any individual organization. We are all one, so we will take part as Indians. In fact, when, he, when the second Satagra took place, he gave up the chief post to another gentleman because he was going to jail. So he will not go as an RSS person, but as a citizen, normal citizen of the country. Uh, another thing, Hemu Kalani, 1942, he was hanged to death because he was participating in 1942 and tried to sabotage the railway. There is a famous Chimur Satyagra in Vidarbha where a lot of swamps have got involved, there was violence there and many faced life imprisonment and threat of, uh, you know, hanging also. They were also prime forces for Goa, Damandiu, independence struggle. They gave Satyagraha. Many people were jailed for years even after the uh, even after Goa's liberated. So if I gather what you're saying is, so somewhere down the line in the functioning of the RSS, the underlying understanding is that the activities RSS is banner ke under kar hai, wo theek hai. Magar if a swam sevak in his own individual or her own individual capacity wants to get into an activity, they can join those other organizations so, so yes of course any organization they can join any organization they can start any organization rss by itself its prime role is to run shakhas which is the if you this is the place where people are disciplined are taught about patriotism or taught about various aspects of indian culture hindu culture so that is a training ground and after getting the training they are supposed to go to the uh, to the uh, to the society and do whatever best they can do for the society now I get into the other part. Uh, so now obviously post 1947, 
there is no freedom struggle rss still obviously rss was banned for uh, the alleged uh, assassination of mahatma gandhi and obviously the ban was lifted and the famous uh, march where nehru had uh, invited rss swayam sevaks uh, 63 63 mein ab main issue ye hai ki there is a huge aspect of the social work rss does which i mean at least i belong to the urban upper middle class middle class indian sect and whenever i go around talk to people nobody really knows what rss does and and and, and why i would this question is in two forms first what is the work that rss does in the social sphere and second why the hell don't they don't uh, don't they market that aspect okay. i'll answer the second question first <laughs> see there is in genes of rss what is called in it used to be called prasiddhi paranga mukta that means avoid publicity because what you are doing is your national duty your duty to the society so there is no need for any propaganda or any publicity that is the thought that dr edgar gave as one of the important principles he said once you get into this propagandist mode you get into publicity mode you lose focus and there are chances that vested interests will get into your job this is one of the reasons because we keep away from the propaganda and you know publicity there is there is never any struggle to get into a post or take any responsibility because more responsibility get more time and money put away for a pocket it's because of this uh, there is no i mean when somebody takes a higher responsibility we actually console the guy we don't really are congratulate him because he is going to spend more time more resources on this because all the work that rss people do all the money they spend is out of their pocket for every activity right from uniform to camp to uh, to the workshops wherever they go right from travel to the all spec expenses borne by the swayam so that is why rss doesn't need many funds because funds come from the swayam so themselves now coming to the publicity part again so this particular idea was also followed very rigorously by shri guruji the second chief actually guruji took over the rss uh, work when doctor died within 15 years of taking starting rss because he worked so hard nearly all the time of the day that it is said that when he was on the death bed even in even his dreams he you know in his sleep he would keep on saying very very sure if there is very little, little short time i have to work faster i have to grow faster in that mode he finally went working tirelessly when he went rss had reached all the states of india the third year training in nagpur had swayam sex from every uh, every state of india so when guruji took over he actually nurtured R- he, uh, nurtured rss from there to become a very strong organization across india he was the leader for 33 years he toured india twice a year 66 times in 33 years all on train and all on buses he never went by air of course there was no resources nor was interested he would travel by second class so that is the kind of rigorous work that they have done now coming to publicity why we don't do it i'll give an example very interesting example if you know 47 uh, shrinagar airport attack was fa- uh, when there was this kabalis coming from uh, you know attacking jammu kashmir military needed shrinagar airport immediately repaired so they approach rss there including balraj madhav professor balraj balraj madhav who recently died so they brought together 100 or 200 swayam sevaks there i'll get you your exact numbers if you want and they were there to repair the runway and get the consigned or arms to the military many young men lost their lives there is no publicity but military has records then again in 47 during partition hundreds of families of rss people suffered because they were working for getting the refugees back from pakistan protecting them securing the, their return to india in the process they lost their business they also sometimes were separated from the family and they had harrowing time but they worked hard and they finally in fact that is one of the reasons why rss was so popular at that time lakhs of people were brought in from sindh punjab and even help was given to bengal side and during this time one swayam sevak made a book a documentation of a book where he tried to explain that what rss has done so shri guruji went to ambala at that time and this gentleman asked him to release the book he saw the book he said why should i release it so this gentleman said see all the work done by people he said you have a mother he said yes he said do you uh, did you give your mother some uh, service and seva when she was sleeping yesterday night he said yes he said i need it in the newspaper so he was shocked so guru ji said you are when you are working for a motherland you don't need publicity from that thought 
this media shyness is built in the genes of rss it is nothing to the secretiveness it is that you keep a just do your good work and people will recognize it you will be surprised that first media cell was made in rss in 1994 70 years <laughs> after, after rss was born so this is the kind of reticence we have because even now in spite of having so much evolution of the media cell the effort is just to pass the right information to the people about various issues about work done by various people and no propaganda is very clear idea there is no propaganda real facts are to be given real uh, work done by various people is to be publicized about hinduism about hindu and work done by rss okay. and there are about 150 60000 service projects now being run by people inspired by rss बट सर यह समस्या आती है अगर आप किसी भी सोशल या सोशियो पोलिटिकल काम में जाएंगे एट द एंड ऑफ द डे अगर आपका काम प्रोजेक्ट नहीं होगा लोगों की आंखों के आगे तो वो काम बड़ा कैसे होगा मैं मैं समझ सकता हूँ कि द प्री मीडिया वर्ल्ड में ये स्ट्रैटेजी मेड अ लॉट ऑफ सेंस कि आप अपना काम करते जाओ जी और तभी हमारे पास था भी क्या मतलब न्यूज होते होंगे जो भी होते हैं बस न्यूज होते होंगे और मगर एट दैट दैट टाइम न्यूज़पेपर्स और मिशन वर्क दे वर नॉट प्रोपेगेंडिस कमर्शियल वेंचर्स रिमेंबर दिस मगर सर आजकल तो न्यूज़ होती नहीं है आजकल ओपिनियन होता है फैक्ट्स आप जाके चेक कर लो वही होता है वो तो इन सच एन एज वेयर इंफॉर्मेशन गैदरिंग यू हैव सच अ ह्यूज सोशल मीडिया इंप्रिंट नाउ ऐसे टाइम में डोंट यू थिंक आई मीन every organization if rss claims to be a hindu organization hinduism the bedrock of hinduism from what i have understood is constant upgradation so hinduism if i mean i am not putting it down to that level but hinduism could be like an uh, like a software that keeps getting upgraded all the time so if rss is open as rajiv mulata says it's open architecture so if, everybody is welcome to put more source code and modify the source code but don't you think rss needs to modify itself and promote its own work see at the end of the day यू कैन से हम ये काम कर रहे हैं मगर अगर किसी को पता ही नहीं तो फिर फायदा क्या मैं मतलब किसी को तो पता होना चाहिए आज अगर मैं कोई काम कर रहा हूँ और अगर मैं किसी को बताऊँ ही नहीं मैं क्या कर रहा हूँ तो लोग आई मीन एट द एंड ऑफ द डे सोशल वर्क का एक बहुत बड़ा एस्पेक्ट फंड रेजिंग होता है फंड रेजिंग के लिए आपको अपने आप को मार्केट करना ही पड़ेगा सो वाइल आई अंडरस्टैंड द so don't you think the rss could actually do something as basic as hire a pr team that that markets rss i mean everybody has a pr team corporate organizations the church has a pr team at the end of the day church is built on propaganda we are not <laughs> <laughs> but Mar- all communist parties are built on propaganda they have hardly any footprint and all they have is propaganda magar agar hum unhe compete kar rahe hain agar main church ko compete kar raha hu At the end of the day, I go into their territory and I talk to them. Uh, option kya reh gaya? So uh, has the RSS decided to change? Or I mean, I know I, obviously we see you on TV regularly now, but again, I always find that funny. I mean, do you come on TV as Ratan Sharda the individual, or do you come on TV as Ratan Sharda representing RSS? There is no clarity, even with Rakesh Sinha ji. whenever i see rakesh sinha ji on tv also it, this is the same issue and i don't know i'm questioning you why this podcast has rss really given it a thought now to structure its communication strategy what what do we see in the future see first of all let me say rss is a business of man making as it is said to abbreviate what we say that we have to create people who will be of high, strong character who will be disciplined who will dedicate their life apart from their own well being to the society with this background if you have to train a person it cannot be propagandist work it is a hard work of somebody being molded regularly attending shakha every day doing various activities which will slowly build up this sense of patriotism and sense of selflessness as i talk starting from putting your own money from where your mouth is and bring everything at your own cost so you learn the understanding of sacrifice so this sense of sacrifice of all kind of resources if this is to be done this cannot be a work of this cannot be a work of not be done through propaganda yes you need to convey your thoughts when you say you need to convey your thoughts as i said in 94 this media cell was you know this so called prachar vibhag was made because of this the thing slowly evolved see rss is huge organization realize rss works on consensus no decision in rss is done unless there is a consensus even if two people out of 15 or 10 don't agree with an idea one person doesn't agree with an idea 
either he has to be he has to either agree with the idea it may take 6 months 2 months 2 days till everybody is on board no decision is taken this may be them sound very anarchist you will say it's not democratic but you want to take everybody along in the society in the organization you have to get people along with a good will when you take a decision everybody is along that is one of the reasons why rss has not seen a split in 1990 in all this 90 years and you will find the same level whether it's a communist party same 90 year old or any other party they split multiple times they they have i mean un in socialist movement in fact has been split un how many i don't know how many number of times so this kind of sense of unity of purpose is what makes rss strong so th the prachar vibhag when it started even to define what exactly do mean by prachar vibhag even today when somebody comes to a media team he or she has to be explained that the we just want to project the right thoughts the right ideas the right work that people have done and not do any kind of propaganda which is misleading or which doesn't have solid facts behind it so rss media has evolved a lot it is it has various aspects now so there are a lot of people who are not organized by rss or working on social media they are on to and if you see what is the what is the bugbear of communist and congress is they feel that rss has plan to you know spam the whole social media which is not true actually there is no rss plan behind social media but it is people who are swam sirs who feel or sympathize or feel something needs to be done and on their own they have thought that you know rss needs much more better uh, dissemination they have gone ahead and done there are some structures also there are there are organizations who are supposed to disseminate the information and pass it on to the society but yes this shyness of the media will take time to go i go on rss uh, you know when i go to tv or media i go as a person with rss thinking i go as a thinker who writes not as an rss official spokesperson there are just two spokespersons of rss um, mr manmohan vedya who is chief of media cell and mr nand kumar who is deputy chief of media cell and of course rss chief and rss general secretary otherwise because see there are there are two uh, all india meetings of rss pratinidhi sabha and working committee meeting at that time the resolutions they pass they are the true reflection of what rss thinks on various issues what we say on tv on sir what spur of the moment yesterday i was on tv and there was this whole tamasha of paneer selvam and uh, sashikala what i said was naturally not rss view rss takes a lot of time to create a view and then project it so that happens only once in a while see then then that's a huge problem if you ask me that there is no clarity on what the rss stands for and this is there is see there is there is a lot of literature being spawned there is a lot of literature available on the net nearly all the organizations of rss are available on the net they have got their own websites they are also learning of course many websites don't get updated you know for days so they all the organizations have their website there is their publication small and big see the problem is not rss is not telling people you realize that after 47 nehruvian socialism nehruvian thought which was dominated by communist and leftist they saw to it that no alternative was available anywhere in ac academia in any kind of social organizations whether it's ichr whether it's uh, social humanities you have example of ram swarup you have example of sitaram goel excellent huge intellectuals in fact rajiv malhotra ji you know finds them as a big inspiration these are the people who had their own huge academic background their huge research but they were not published anywhere they would not get job in any university and even today if you even if you are an editor or if you are a historian you will find mr lal who was a uh, kind of uh, you know suitable to left view but when he researched on ram mandir he was banished he was abused he was criticized and he was told to be an rss you know sangatodi so this is the kind of intolerant atmosphere in which rss works so it's not that rss doesn't have academy uh, academic people it doesn't have people who write on history but unfortunately they are sidelined by the so called mainstream academics i'll give an example ityas sankalan samiti which is basically a, a society which was inspired by an rss pracharak who himself wrote a very interesting book about the possibility of you know and uh, the how these various puranas were written how the human evolution took place whether they were facts or how much of it was fiction, uh, fiction etc so he created a organization called itihas sankalan samiti if you see the saraswati research that is being done if you see this huge uh, body of work now which has actually uh, you know 
denied the RN invasion theory, which is being also researched by many people, and you find that RN invasion theory is actually a fiction. So this work initiated by this group. So they know what they're talking about. They did research. In fact, Vakankar is one of the pioneers of history and also uh, ancient studies. He went into it. They had satellite imagery and they created the whole path of Saraswati. That is how this whole thing has come out. We know it's no more just inter-civilization, it's Indo-Saraswati civilization. And it has proven that the people who live here originate from here. There was no violence. There was no violence against so-called Dravidians who were thrown out in the south. So all this figment of imagination created by British, it was finally, you know, this movement was created by RSS inspired people. So you cannot say that RSS does not have books or does mm -hmm. not have enough philosophical material which can be shared with people. But see, here's the thing. I get the stranglehold of the media over, over the thought, the mainstream thought. But I would have taken this as a valid answer before the age of social media. Now you have social media. Now you have media fretting over curbing social media in this exactly. country. So why? Because they find that so-called nationalist forces are very strong on social media. People like Kushal Mehra has nothing to do with RSS, also has his own mind, which leftists don't like. There are many such people. And I told you there are websites available, there is literature available, there are books available. It's just a question of searching for them because we don't have enough sites. There is a there is a shop, a net shop called bookbharti.com where you'll find many books and booklets. And yes, now this has to this has increased. I would say that the process of writing, documenting, and sharing information is slowly increasing. RSS is evolving in sense of being more media friendly and offering more information to the people who want to have more information. Going out to meet people, having meetings with people who are not part of RSS and sharing their ideas. And I can tell you wherever we go, this idea of some demon sitting somewhere, you know and trying to cover the sky with black and you know just throw out the light of the nation all this idea of demonization gets killed once you see people face to face so this meeting with various social leaders opinion leaders media people keeps on happening or so editor may like us but the editor has his proprietor satisfy he may not print it but this sharing of ideas sharing of information on social media various platform is happening I, I think in next five years, you'll have no, no, no cause to complain. You might find us <laughs> flooding the place. You know, it's so no, much see, see, this is where, and this is a valid point. I'll tell you, see, most of the times, people don't know what the RSS thinks or says. People know what the media thinks the RSS thinks. And it is the media's portrayal of the RSS point of view. So we, let us take a few social issues. Let us take Section 377 and the criminalization of homosexuality. Now, until Dattava uh, Datta Husbale did not go on the India Today conclave and he actually gave an opinion on that issue, which was that RSS is not... A funny thing. thing is, see how uh, RSS trains people to think in the same direction with the right kind of information about Indian culture. I wrote an article months before uh, Dattaji spoke about it okay. and it reflected exactly the same opinion what I wrote. So it's just that we, because of our upbringing in, in Hindu culture, we have similar thoughts and we know how to look at the social issues and we are not bound by so-called orthodox leftist worldview or Christian worldview. We are much more liberal about thinking because Hindu, Hindu thought itself is liberal. So, Hindu thought is something which allows to have a republic of faith. So RSS as an organization, for the record, is for decriminalization of homosexuality nobody should be put in jail of course for having sexual relations whatever people do in their bedrooms yeah. is their, See, it, their is not, it is not a modern thought in fact Karan Thapar asked me he was so surprised and he was shocked when he heard Dattaji and I told him this is a normal view because if you look at the Indian history right from thousands of years there has been never a criminalization of a homosexual or a lesbian there are known stories of people who are homosexual there are known stories of people there are stories, in fact, you talk of kin uh, kinners as a very valid, you know, third sex. With all that known, it's a personal deviation, we say, and that if personal deviation is fine, I mean, you can't criminalize it. So that is the view, which is our own view for thousands of years. When this question came up, in fact, I was rather uncomfortable, you know. And so I did some research, I read something, I found various views, what in the views, and I wrote an article, I was called on NDTV. Unfortunately, the debate was cancelled for whatever reason. But that set me thinking. So I went to various books, I went to various uh, literature and I thought 
that this is what Hindu culture thinks. So this was put on paper, and luckily for me, this what Datta Ji <laughs> spoke about after some months on the same issue. So now on the second issue, RSS is an organization that believes in uniting Hindus and and see reforming Hindu society. Reforming, okay. Yeah. Now the part of reform. Good, you have used this word reform. So now I take it from reform. Speech is a very important aspect of reform because unless you don't have free speech in a society, True. you cannot have any reform. So what hurts me is now every time some loony tune Hindu group will go and bash. Let us take the latest example of Sanjay Leela Bansali. Some loony tunes goes and bashes up. Now why would if now here's the thing 295A is a blasphemy law in India. Why would a 84% or 82% or I, I, I'm, I'm taking Sikhs, Buddhists, Hindus all together and Jains. That is how constitution defined it, you know. Those who are not Muslims, Parsi, Sikhs, Sikhs are Hindus. Hindus, right? Because That's, you cannot define Hinduism. Abhi unko right? HUF bhi toh unko khonne diya jata hai na. Toh naturally wo Hindu hi ho hai na. Toh Hindu undivided right. family unko right. kyo khonne diya jayega. Point ye hai ki jab desh mein 84% population hai ek particular thought ki. अब इन चारों रिलीजन्स में या चारों फिलोसफीज में अगर आपको रिलीजन वर्ड नहीं यूज करना है चारों दर्शनों में किधर भी ब्लास्फमी नहीं है तो इस देश में सत्तर साल हो गए अभी आज भी हम एक घटिया किस्म का लॉ लेके घूम रहे हैं और आरएसएस क्यों नहीं इसके अगेंस्ट बात करती वाई इज इन दी आर एस एस अगेंस्ट टू नाइनटी फाइव एव यू आई एम एन एप्सोल्यूटिस्ट आई वॉज आई एम अरीश्वरवादी हिंदू मेरे अंदर भगवान की तरफ आकर्षण नहीं है मगर मैं हिंदू हूं क्योंकि मुझे ये हिंदू सोसाइटी में सिखाया गया कि भगवान हिंदू होने के लिए जरूरी नहीं है आप राइटली सेड हिंदू बेसिकली इज अ फिजिकल एंड कल्चरल टर्म हिंदू इज नॉट अफ हिंदू इज नॉट अ रिलीजन और अ पंथ हिंदू इज अ कंसेप्ट ऑफ धर्म वेन यूज धर्म धर्म इज समथिंग विच इज ड्यूटी योर धर्म इज वॉट होल्ड सोसाइटी टूगेदर सो एवरीबडी इज अ धर्म एज अ लॉयर एज अ डॉक्टर एज अ प्रोफेशनल एज अ स्टूडेंट or as a son or as a, or as a father so this is this is the duty that people do ethically we are behaving in the society so anybody can have a pitru dharm even muslim has a pitru dharm even a christian has a matru dharm so this dharm concept is very different from the so called religion that is why there is huge confusion when you talk of rss because rss talks of hindu as a social and as a geographical entity as it was defined by iranians earlier on and various other people and as a cultural term because all the people living in india whether they are sikhs or hindus or christian or all the philosophies that came out of this dharma have something very common across their habits their way of looking at life the so called way of life or looking at different aspects of living are well defined so and they have this common thread across yeah but the point is that if that is the underlying understanding of everybody why is this country still having a law like 295a and why isn't an organization like rss openly criticizing such a law that is my complaint with the rss that is my biggest grouse me, with the rss let me say that we have inherited a colonial structure of nation state it is not structure that is meant for india india has its own government india has its own way of social organization its own way of governing so each village has each village each place had their own economic life they had their own rules controlling the economic life and king was only looking at the external factors overall defense and security etc and they were responsible for their education their science and everything so this kind of society when it superimposed this decentralized society when it was superimposed by centrally controlled authority that colonials brought in that colonial structure was taken by the new constitutional group and led by nehru and who said that we will follow the same english system so this english system brought with that criminality of homosexuality it brought in criminality of blasphemy etc so these laws which were not as per the spirit of india as dindyal upadhyay called it you know chitti you know the innate nature of hindu society of all the religious faiths that it's a republic of faith you have a right to say what you want to say or right to have factual argument about anything and you have if you do something logically you have right to live your life accordingly so this is on this thought if we went these laws would never be in india aur sir abhi aisa hai na ki jin jin angrezon ko hum dosh de rahe hain laws ke liye nahi nahi unhone aapko kya kaha maine kaha wo humne inherit kar liye hum dur unse ho sakte the sir unhone hi nikal diye hum nahi nikal rahe hain wo laws humne 48 mein jab 47 mein jab constitution assembly bani we had a right to go back to our genius that's what gandhi said that's what all the various nationalist leaders said 
that we have a different genius, we have different way of looking at life and organizing. So this is what should be done as part of constitution building. But we blindly copied a Western model, which even they find it difficult today. And this doesn't suit our chitti at all. So we are having a artificial construct built on a society which is so its own way of thinking and working on. So let me put this on record. RSS by itself is not in favor of any blasphemy law. Let me get that clear. Or RSS is it? not expressed any view on blasphemy law, let me say first of all. But RSS by its very nature says follows Hindu's way of life, believes that everybody has a right to speak, what one what one rights to speak. But as a democratic society, there is a limit of this particular how much will you go for this kind of freedom of speech, but it has never stopped freedom of speech because that is innate in Hindu nature. So there is no view as such of opposing this particular blasphemy law. But I would say a law can be law when it is applicable to all of us. So if blasphemy law is there and you know some people find it offensive and they will use the law, then Hindus have, have same right to fight against blasphemy law. But sir, that doesn't solve anybody's problem, right? Uh, see, for any society to progress, any society. Yes, so as long as the criticism is factual, it should be allowed. But sir, Where does blasphemy come into this? Sir, but criticism, let us assume criticism factual. What is the difference? You are not a good person. Let us assume Sanjay Leela Bansali has made a very good picture. Who is the first picture? I don't know. Hey, 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 don't talk Sanjay Leela Bansali's history. There is a difference history and philosophy. I have to go to Nanga and wear a dress. But I will make a film called Shiva Ji, which is our national heritage, our proven history. I can't play that game. My personal objection is not that Sanjay Leela Bansali's picture is not that the picture is made. अगर इतिहास से खेलेगा तो मुझे तकलीफ होगी। सर तकलीफ होगी। It is not law, it is not blasphemy। क्या हमें? Can you tomorrow say, tomorrow you will say that Ravana was a saint and Ram was a message that is what being tried to project today? That is not the way to look at history. That is not the way look to look at a religion. I agree with you. You cannot twist facts. You cannot mythify a history just to have some lovely romantic film. I get you. Not acceptable. Point. Let him make a film on. His family or Mr. Mukhe, Mahesh Bhatt's family for that matter, anything. Sir, he, my any point is he can let him make a make movie on anything. There are some movies that come on homosexuality. We have no problem. No, society, no person from Hindu society has any objection. This movie of homosexuality, what Aligarh, was objected to by Naligarh and by Muslim groups, not by Hindu groups, remember. So these kind of things will happen in a society which is closed mind, not Hindu society which is open mind. But, but sir, you cannot twist historical fact. That is the sir, a different but, view. That is not freedom of speech. Sir, that, nor is that blasphemy. Sir, na, I am not blasphemy. Se mix nahi uh-huh. kar Sanjay Leela Bansali ka case isle le raho, ki let us assume he is depicting wrong history. No, I give you example of Aligarh. Let us talk mm-hmm. of that. Yeah, yeah. Because blasphemy comes under that. If you say I don't believe in God and you make a film which is, you know, which, uh, let us talk about PK for example. Hmm. Nobody objected to the movie. We had some pain. We said, okay. No, there mm-hmm. was an objection to PK. People who did not like the movie, they did not go I, and watch I it. I didn't go and watch. Yeah. I wrote an article. I said, if you are talking about some disbelief, my problem was that films, the films since I am born, I don't know about earlier times, I have been seeing Hindu Pujari always raping women in the temple. Mulana ji, very nice person, always khuda ka banda, you know, giving shelter to people. And Padri was, with the high culture, nurturing boys and girls to become great people. So this continuous, you know, this t- twist and this image creation, deliberate or non-deliberate image creation about the Hindu society by these so-called secular filmmakers is something that hurt me. So when it hurt me, I wrote an article. It went viral. So my view is that you have, you should, where you want to be criticized, you criticize, but nobody stopped the movie. Sir, what is the story? Sir, what is the story? Sir, what is the story? When XYZ religion is targeted in a particular way or ABC religion is targeted in a particular way. But where I disagree with you is the solution to this problem is more free speech. The solution to this problem cannot be, Bhai, tu mujhe bolne nahi de raha hai, to ab ek kaam so karta hai, mein tujhe bolne nahi dunga. what is, see, exactly, the solution is that everybody speak. But when Kamlesh Tevari speaks, he's put behind bar. So, sir, may, <laughs> so, so again, now, in when, spite of me being yeah. an atheist, and they and when, when I are, did go when, and complain about the Bansali, your example of Bansali, when he was criticized, mm-hmm. everyone went to the time saying Hindus have become terrorists. So this very, very lopsided way of Hindu society, this very, very biased way of projecting Hindu society is what pains people. Sir, I am saying that 
मेरा ये माध्यम के थ्रू आर को एक ही मैसेज होगा कि अगर आर को इस प्रॉब्लम को सॉल्व करना है तो आर एस को या जैसे मैंने ददलानी के खिलाफ कंप्लेंट की थी आई हैड अ मैसेज और मेरा भी बहुत ही डेंजरस एक्सपीरियंस था कि मीडिया मेरा मैसेज नहीं ले रही थी इसके लिए किसी मीडिया ने मुझे कवर नहीं किया मगर पॉइंट ये है कि अगर हमें ये बैटल जीतनी है मैं जब हमें कहता हूँ हमें एज इंडियन एज अ सोसाइटी इंक्लूड्स द लेफ्ट विंग ऑल्सो वी कैन ओनली विन दिस वेन वी गिव फ्री स्पीच एंड एंड इवन मोर लीवे आज क्या होता है आज आज लेटेस्ट टेक अनदर एग्जाम्पल समन लाइक तारिक फतेह now he has a show on ztv now somebody goes to supreme court amolana and tries to shut him up it doesn't help us i mean i know nehru murdered free speech in india with the first amendment act but the point is rss is a powerful organization if it wanted to my the, I, all i'm doing via this podcast is requesting you to tell the seniors in rss that boss aap free speech ko badhava do you might have short term benefits by curbing somebody else's right to speak or even to speak a falsehood let us say bad depiction of history is a falsehood i agree with you i am with you but the point is we have become reactionary as a society i i believe hindu society by and large has become reactionary wo karte rehte hain hum react karte hain why I mean, uh, other than Modi, I don't see anybody in India who, uh, where he sets the terms and everybody else keeps reacting. That so my request reason, to the RSS the would be RSS to... with its own agenda of reforming the society keeps on working. <coughs> whether it's casteless society, whether it's you know uh, reform of the temples or reform of the education system or you know various other issues that Hindu society suffers from. So there it works on its own agenda peacefully and without getting into diversionary energy wasting issues. but if you are creating an opinion today do you think that all these issues of uh, this all this uh, you know see the outburst of hindus feeling neglected or feeling biased against etc etc is born out of it own no it is something that has built over years when society becomes strong these issues will vanish so when hindu society becomes strong and you know improves itself these kind of issues will die down but point is If you want to go ahead and have you know amendment of this article removed, RSS cannot fight all the battles. Let me tell you, RSS creates a body of people who go and fight. But would the RSS yeah. oppose it or support it? That's what I'm Why interested. Why should oppose it? Why should oppose it? So it would support a removal of a blasphemy law from yeah, India. Yeah, either you have freedom for all. See, what I'm is happy. happening now? That's all I wanted now, to hear. Let me tell you, this freedom of expression is a joke in India, right? It is a joke in right. India. So We have no free speech so in India. So it's only free speech is of the left people. so called liberal people yeah, yeah. and there is no free speech for so called right is reactionary people like me so when they speak out against somebody Absolutely. i am totally intolerant i am with so you on that so jnu doesn't allow makan paranpur to walk in and my liberal people friends keep quiet when something else when recently all these issues came up of you know smriti irani being abused on the net it was disgusting none, yes nobody spoke up so this freedom of expression has been two way If you have the guts, if you got courage, please go ahead and allow everybody same freedom of speech and same freedom of expression. We love it. Hindus and Hindus, Hindus by by the very logic I said, are born with free speech. You can have charvak like you are a charvak follower, and I can be a follower of uh, you know Krishna. Somebody can be a follower of Buddha. There is no fight at all. Okay. It's a it's a fight of ideas in the realm of ideas only. Okay. Now my otherwise my 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 people the, this society would not have reached Thailand. Vietnam and Kampuchea and you know on this side on Gandhar and all these places without such peaceful spread of ideas. China today agrees that the, the ideas came from India. There was no fight. There was, they never, none of the kings were never ever went out to spread the religion by sword. They spread idea. They had people going out. Somebody liked. They took it, and there was no force. This is exactly the way you have to your your culture expands. Okay, now. obviously we have to wrap things up soon but last question now a lot of it has been uh, on social media and uh, a lot of credit has to be given to advaita kala who has been talking about this issue regularly and again shame on the mainstream media they should feel ashamed over themselves but i'm going to mix these two questions and i needed an answer on this is the rss relationship with the bhartiya janata party and why i want to know the relationship is because you've written an article recently about this issue i mean about the brutal murders one after the other of rss members in kerala 
and what is the rss relationship with bjp and what the hell is the bjp doing in kerala then right see first of all if i go back in history a little jansang is the forerunner of bjp as you know very well jansang was founded by dr shyam prasad mukherjee he came out of congress because nehru liagat pact he was against it he was a minister in the Cong- uh, nehru government he was also a member of hindu mahasabha at that time it surprised there are many leaders who used to be in hindu mahasabha and also congress socialist party and also congress well, people like kripalani they were around so when he started this organization he said i, w- I don't want a hindu party hindu mahasabha was already there i want a nationalist party so he's trying to figure out how to you know strengthen the organization so he went and met guruji and he said that i want some people to in the political field and guruji was very reluctant basically guruji was not political he was not happy he say, always felt that politics is not the solution solution does not lie with the government solution lies with people so unless people are strengthened unless society is strengthened society will not change this was his firm belief so he was very reluctant to help him then younger people like bala sahib devaras people at that time you know these people of that time they persuaded him this 48 ban was a cathartic moment for rss it was a worst period in history of rss when 80000 people were in jail on satyagraha when people lost their jobs people lost their businesses in fact the studio in uh, in uh, kolapur i can't recall the name immediately it was burned down papa yes and a very famous uh, producer director he was a swayam sir and from there on this persecution carries on till now and we also add that this nehru's obsession with rss didn't start with gandhi murder two days before gandhi murder he declared that i'll crush rss all the while of saying this not only that in 46 when assemblies were made maharashtra uh, congress committee thought that we must suppress rss somehow so big national state level program where one lakh swayam sevak was supposed to come and sardar patel was supposed to come was cancelled just a few days before this 1932 law of rss not uh, i mean government people not allowed to join rss came in 1932 by british so people say rss has nothing to do with independence you realize that british thought is so dangerous they brought a law that government servants should not join rss that is still being abused it came up in mp so with this kind of background when uh, we suffered in 48 there was no party supporting rss so they persuaded guruji that we need some people to speak for us in the political field also so four or five very good workers of rss were handed over to bjp i mean jansang it included dindyal upadhyay included uh, uh, i think nana ji deshmukh and a few more jagandhara joshi from karnataka so these four or five people or pracharaks they were given to bj uh, to shyama prasad mukherjee and guruji would just when they came they would just talk and guide them but never at all ask them what is happening in jansang nor did they try to influence it and that is how jansang was born that is how rss relation with jansang came into being so people who are inclined to R- to politics would go to jansang when they went like if jansang requested for uh, some people to help those people are sent to jansang they they were no more rss office bearer no office bearer of rss can be office bearer in jansang or bjp that is clear law there is clear understanding so people who become uh, join rss uh, B- uh, jansang they can work in jansang or bjp but they will come to rss <coughs> but would never hold an office in rss so this is a background for where rss BJ- bjp relation is born so you have uh, people like vajpayee ji who joined bjp at jansang later on he was a pracharak lk advani who was working as an rss swayam singh in sindh he became uh, he joined B- bjp with jansang was general secretary of jansang he was not a prachara of course he was married at that time also so there are lot many people who did this so it's a kind of associated uh, relationship i would say some people used to call it parental relationship but jansang or bjp later on become so big that is we cannot say that there is a there is a parental relationship with jansang and or bjp and rss rss is soon we are working bjp is a soon independent way working they share the same thoughts they share the same ideas and they exchange ideas beyond this rss does not control bjp at all that is my view and this is view based out of my personal experience of dealing with people jansang people or bjp people whom i have known who have worked with me are today in bjp and i don't see any grassroots level or you know command level control on bjp at all it's a exchange of ideas this sharing of ideas if people can exchange ideas with anybody they can exchange rss also that's a close organic relationship because lot many people 
full timer they have gone to jansa bjp and they have worked for bjp so that organic relationship is there which cannot be denied so then it, uh, then i ask you the next question they came to kerala okay yeah if you i'll tell you the kerala background a little though you don't have much of a time the the violence against rss didn't start now the first incident of violence against rss was 2 years before gandhi uh, two days before gandhi murder shri guruji had a function in kerala in kerala rss word has just begun that means very small the people who gathered would have been hundreds and cp uh, communist party that time was on cpm they attacked rss shakha so i am sex somehow retaliated and saved guruji another four days later four years later so i think 58 or 50 uh, 52 or 54 another program of, of i am writing an article so i will collect all the dates now again was attacked again they they you know protected guruji later on even swami chinmayananda if you remember swami chinmayananda chinmay mission he had a program in kerala college he was attacked by communist goons once the party split cpm became the real hot head from then on because kannur is their place where they feel, feel they serve vote the anything that happens in kannur hurts them tremendously they have got their party villages where every member of the village has to be communist party member they have got their uh, party courts where they will decide the fate of the person who leaves co- uh, communist party or who works against communist ideology so they have been vi- they have perpetrated violence just against rss let me tell you they also perpetrated against rebels who leave communist party they perpetrated against muslims in fact the fight with muslims began somewhere in nandu manambudari paths time when they took out a march against muslim league and it became a communal riot so communal riots in kerala were started by communist party and muslim league during those periods i think somewhere in 50s so there is a long history of violence against communi- communist party and especially marxist party the first the real big attack started somewhere in 64 and the first attack accused was pinnari vijayan currently the chief minister of kerala so their main grounds is anybody who is against uh, their ideology will be mined will be killed they have a court which decides whether to kill the person you know there is a song mar diya jaye ke chhod diya jaye so they decide ki marna hai ki kaatna hai so they will give the punishment accordingly if you remember sadan master his legs were cut and not only cut his legs were covered by cow dung soil so that it will not be repairable and this is one example when a very raghavan one of the cpm members went rebel and he won a seat he joined congress government because he could not be touched his whole zoo and you know a small society run by him which made medicine out of snake venom was burned down snakes were burned down crocodiles were burned down monkeys were burned down because they couldn't reach the that guy where you cannot touch the family they will they will attack the child also so it's a totally violent ideology typically fascist ideology that is running in communist in kerala unfortunately since pinnari vijayan came attacks have multiplied many times they include rss they include anybody who stood for the elections so that is a background a very brief background of kerala today and that is why but in spite of this rss has grown tremendously it is the most dense work of rss in kerala per capita per village and they have such a cross communion i'll tell you another touching example and close this matter that uh, in a program where Jaj- nandu kumar ji was there a woman a guard woman of old age was standing you know he she came for the utsav it is of guru pujan where uh, where uh, swayam sir give their whatever they wish to give for the work of rss it is guru puja as a tribute to the guru which is bhagwadaj and he said and i remember this lady who is she she said he the swayam sir told him that this is mother of the swayam sir was killed 13 days back and this is the guru puja the guru dakshina that he had collected to be given to the shakha she has come to give this this is the kind of dedication this is the kind of team work and this is the kind of strong emotional bonding of people in kerala so they will fight it out ideologically and communists have no f- uh, place to hide in the world forget about india and there is no hope that the bjp is going to do anything about it see whether bjp does or not of course i am pained that they should do more in fact there is a book released by prime minister modi ahuti where it is well documented of various rss bjp people killed there and only kill, only cases of murder are there there are no case of miming there are 700 families who are suffering because breadwinner has lost a leg or an eye or an arm and so those people are to taken care of there are hundreds of cases false cases against rss people which they are fighting including bjp people abvp people 
in fact two uh, four abp uh, workers were drowned in the river by seeing fit that they cannot climb back in a college because you cannot have a union in a college controlled by sfi not only you even asfi communist party cannot have a union muslim league cannot have a union where communist party is a union this is the kind of fascist horrible environment which kerala lives it is not a god's country anymore it's a devil's workshop and where rss is fighting this battle if government comes out openly and tries to pressurize these people with the public opinion with the law that they cannot keep on allowing this happening it will be great but rss has never lived on government charity never lived on government support it will keep on growing it has worked in very very hostile environment under nehru and under indira gandhi under various congress communist regimes so it will keep on working with self as work but yes we expect that with central government the central government in the center they would they have i think at that much power though they cannot interfere in the law and border machinery of the state to put moral pressure and public opinion pressure that they will stop this murderous trail that they are leading now <coughs> well i hope that happens so we have crossed our it's not just kerala there is also bengal you know yeah so it is a, it's now the next kashmir now yeah and we we'll talk about it you are called communal yeah unfortunately the i mean the only thing i can end by saying is uh, the one reason i want india to be majority hindu is uh, i am on the hit list uh, or the top number because i am hindu and atheist <laughs> i'll tell you if if the india is to survive as we know it yeah. as we know it as a democratic republic of all faiths where people can profess their faith where syrian christians came where jews came where parsis came and freely had their religion they could spread their religion they could profess their religion it is only possible if, as long as india remains a hindu majority country and as long as hindu remain in the diversity you can have a hindu like mamta so called hindu you know uh, leading bengal we know we don't have these kind of hindus required because then you are going on the side of extreme secularism where minority has more rights and more uh, oppressive power than the majority so bengal is a majority country a majority state but we have malda we have got various other things happening there we know what's happening there you can't have your durga puja you can't have durga visarjan and you can't have your now you have no more uh, ram dhanu you have wrong dhanu because ram is a it's communal word yeah, that so, was <laughs> actually that that i found funny and on that note it's tragically funny actually. yeah I, we have to end it now so thanks a lot sharda ji i thanks really Sujan, thanks you. a lot for giving me the opportunity and let me tell you just to again confuse you it's my personal view as a self <laughs> thank you very but much. having a brown in a you know complete environment of rss 50s i would believe that most of the sense will feel this way so there we go we end on a note where i'm as confused <laughs> as i started so thank you hope to see you guys again